Okay, welcome back to a video. Uh, this video we're going to discuss how to set up a multi-boot uh, CD key. So this here, uh, I have a 32 gigabyte data traveler USB key. They're really cheap these days. Instead of carrying around multiple CDs, what we can do is <clears throat> have this boot into Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 8, to do your install back into onto your machine if you have to re-image. You can also use Linux or you can use a uh, boot, a, an emergency boot key, uh, key, Hiren's boot CD. I will show you in this video how to set up this key and turn it into a boot key for multiple uses. So we start off, we need Win Setup from USB. And this tool here, you would just download the latest version. So when you click on it, it will go to your downloads folder. And then what you will need is if you need a Windows 10 CD or ISO, you then go to this link. I'll provide all of the links in the bottom of the video, but you can go to this link and download the tool. And with this tool, the media creation tool, <clears throat> show you here. You would then follow through the prompts and what it would do is get you a Windows 10 ISO and then put your license key in and then you're all ready to go. So this would allow you to re-image if you have a Windows 10 machine that has viruses or it's just not working right, you want to clean it up. You can go into Windows 10 and actually go down and, and reset it. But if it's really messed up where you can't get back in because something happened like failed hard drive or something and you need to re-image, re you could just go through. So the usual license agreements, let's click accept. You basically go through the tabs and you can download it right into the system. You can have an upgrade your system from this, or you could download the ISO to be able to put it out to a, another method, like a boot key. It will also help you build a boot key if you just want Windows. The whole portion of this video is to show multiple, not just single. So while that's happening in the background, let's click to another tab. If you need server versions of, of the Windows OS, you can get any version here from the link mentioned here in the evaluation center. So these will run 188, 180 days. And if you apply a license key to them, they become full legit versions. So if you're testing like myself in a VM environment, you could then do that like I have here. So I have a 2019 and I have a Windows 10 VM. So this allows me to play with things and install things. As you can see, the 180. And these are actually made from the images I'm suggesting you pull, you download. So for this demonstration of this USB key, again, the data traveler, 32 gig key, you can get them on Amazon for like seven bucks nowadays. The bigger the key you go, the more you can install. I'll plug in my, my current one I use now. It's called a technician toolbox. So let's minimize them. And I have a thing called the technician's toolbox and I have multiple boot keys. I have Ubuntu Linux or Ubuntu, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. Um, I have Windows, many different versions. So this key is my normal key. I would go out when I'm fixing computers. If I have to re-image, I can do that. If I need files from it, I can click into it. I can pop into the image and see whatever I need. This key is 128 gigabit key, a gigabytes key, sorry. I also have on it, another partition called ISOs, which allows me to go in, as I just mentioned, if I need to grab a file from Windows, I can just double click on the ISO and it's right there. I can go into the sources folder and grab any of the DLLs or anything I may need to fix Windows. So it's a good idea. The bigger the key you have, the more tools you can carry with you. As you see, it just connected there. So I'm just going to eject that because I don't need it. So my G key is almost full, but it also has, as you see, it's 80 gigs and the rest of it is left over for ISOs. So it's split up. For demonstrations, this one, the one I'm showing here, this one, I already have one plugged in, but this is one I, I will use as well. So I have one plugged in, which is the L drive, and I had tested it earlier. I'm going to now disconnect the one I just plugged in, the G key. And you should always you should always disconnect and then once you do that you can then pull so this is my pny 
128 key key. And this one here, I also have my next video, I could show you how to build a Mac one as well. So if I need to reinstall a Mac, I have all the Mac OS's, the last five or six on here. So I can boot this on any Mac, choose the OS I need and reinstall on a Mac. So this is my, my technician's toolbox with one screwdriver. This is all I need. And I have a multi kit. So if you use Macs and so forth, they use different keys. If you have to replace hard drives, you can then use this to re-image. So these ones are my tool locks I use. So the back to the discussion of the video, we are going to use that tool. Bring up the links. This one here. So we need that. We need a Windows 10 image, which the tool here is now doing. So this Windows 10 builder tool will say you want to upgrade or create. So we want to create. And when you click next, it will download. So I'm going to cancel that because we already have it. So you would just download and then follow through. If you want Windows 2019, 2016, 2012, you can download the images here as well. The other one is a emergency boot key. So let's say you have Windows, you can't get in, but you have data you don't want to lose. You've done a recent Windows update, the system just won't boot, or you've done something where it just won't boot, but the hard drive's still good. Well, how do you get in and get the data if Windows won't boot? You can one, pull the disk and put it into a different system and pop your disk. If it's encrypted, you may or may not be able to get back in. So you have a problem there with encryption. If it's not encrypted, which most users aren't for home users, then you can use a tool like this. And this tool has all kinds of boot tools, other tools, as you can see, has a pile of tools built into this tool. You just download this image here. So that's all you have. Again, go to the higher end boot. Now, if you're not sure what this is, we can go back to here. Again, I'll put this, this image. This is all stuff on the internet. I'm just showing you how to do it quickly. Hiram's boot is commonly the number one tool. It tells you all about what it is. There's another one called Falcons 4, System Rescue, Ultimate Boot CD, and so on. So these are tools, they, they tell you how to use it, what you can do. So if you want to read more into it, all the links I provide you will help you do it. There's also another tool which lets you build a recovery disk. So if you have a Dell, a Lenovo, an HP, it generally used to come with a CD that would be a recovery. Um, that image would let you recover your system back to factory. So if it's not working quite the same as you did when you first bought it, then what you would do is then put that CD can, sorry, CD into the unit and boot it. The problem is now who uses CDs? So they generally have an image on the disk. You click on a program and it would create a bootable USB key for you to recover your system from. Most people, again, don't do it. So if your system ever craps out, you need to replace a hard drive, you now need to figure out how to get the image. Most people take it to a technician like myself or Staples or Best Buy or call up a uh, service to do so. If you're not too comfortable doing that, you should continue using services because technicians like myself have worked for years how to keep these things up to date. This video is intended for video for anybody who wants to do this but also just to bring technicians up to the current speed. This is what you can carry with you instead of a bunch of CDs or trying to figure it out another way. Most technicians know this stuff. So this here will teach you how to get it. You can download a tool right here. It's called Aomi Backupper. This is a tool you should use if you're a Windows user and you want to back up your system. You can back up your system and you can do a system backup as well. We won't go too much into this, but these are just the tools available because the primary one here is how to build a boot, multi-boot key. So with the USB key multi-boot, we are now going to go into our multi-boot tool. So I have everything downloaded in the toolbox as I mentioned to you to download. So we will run Win Setup 19. And now we know the disk we want is L. So there's L, it's a Kingston Data Traveler, this thing right here. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is format the key. It's brand new and let's put it in DFS. And then what you wanna do is you wanna choose Advanced and choose Custom. There's a reason for that. 
And then what we want to do, the very first one we want to put on, because it's quick and simple for the video, if anybody wants to walk away after this quick one, we can do it. Click Linux, click the three dots, and we will choose the HBCD, the Hiram's Boot CD. Now on the site, Hiram's Boot CD, it says V101. Now if you want to make sure your key is up to date, you may want to label this one V101. This way you know what you did with it. So let's click OK and let's click Go. And it's going to tell you it's going to format L and it's telling you how big it is. It's going to use, it's going to also reformat and repartition it. It's fine, we wanted to do that. So L should drop, which it did. And L's there. Now it has some stuff I did f previously. So what I'm going to do, because sometimes this tool has trouble taking control of the disk, and I think it's probably because you have to be administrator when you run your tool. So what we'll do is we'll format this drive, an NTFS, click start, and let this finish. So formatted it, let's bring up the disk manager again, or file explorer. Uh, one time they were coming on Windows Explorer as well, but that gets mixed up with other things. So L is now formatted. We want L. Let's refresh. L is NTFS. So we're going to auto format, leave it as NTFS, and we'll choose the Linux again and HPCD again. D101. Go. Yes, we will format it. Yes, we know we're formatting it. It disappears and it comes back, which means it's working. So remember, if you do buy it, like that one was just purchased, brought in, I did set it up once, but then it couldn't format the drive. So we needed to manually format it and then go back into the tool. So these little keys, they're pretty handy. They're, they're seven dollars. I have a um, I have a few of them <laughs> and I generally buy the 128 gig one now because they hold so much more data and this Wookiees hold more than one OS. So the whole idea is to be able to restore systems when I'm out in the field or perhaps right in my, my bench. And this allows me to not have to have many different keys or lose one. I know those keys belong with me and I don't need much with me, just this and a pocket screwdriver. Um, one tool I use, a lot of people buy the iFixit cool tools. <clears throat> I have one of those as well, but many times I lend them out. I bought this little kit on Amazon, Tech Teku, <laughs> and it has the multi bits, just like, just like the iFixit kit. And this thing was like thirty dollars, so I have an iFix as well. But this one here is cheaper for me, so if I happen to break it, it's not so much of a loss. And that's how I get into most of my systems. So really, this, these two things, these two things are what I use to go out on the road to fix things. That's it. So. We will uh, go forward. This is copying now. You can see the green bar. And now the green bar is copying. Now each one of these images you place on the disc will take time. So this time to do it in a video here, a lot of people want a quick one. So I'm gonna show you this part and then you really just copy the same idea. You wanna put a Windows in, you choose what Windows image. And over in here, you custom and then you name it Win 10 or Win 7. That's the folder name. I'll show you that in a second once it's all done. So on here, there's an ISO. When you put the Windows version, it'll be a Win Setup folder. In that Win Setup folder, any folder you come up with the starting names, like Win 7, Win 8, Win 10, just quick little names, it will create those folders with the image you installed on there so it can boot up from it. So now this says it's done. Let's click Job Done. The key should then pop up again. There you go. And this time, let's test it. So let's click Test in QEMU. This will 
pull up a little window. There you go. So this is just like booting up a computer. This is what you should see very similar when you boot up your computer. It's going to boot up the key. And there's the very first thing we have in there. It's all we have. If we click that, it's going to try and boot it. And now because this is a fake computer, it's going to crash here. But if it was a real computer, it would keep booting up and boot into the high end boot CD tool. This is just a test to make sure the boot works. That's all this is. It's not going to install Windows or do anything from this because it's just a quick test for memory. So now we know that that works. Now let's add a Windows. So let's go to Windows. And if you did, if you're about to cancel it because, ah, uh, whatever. Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, please look for more videos. If you're still watching, <laughs> hopefully, we'll choose the Windows 10 image. And we want to do custom. And make sure you have the advanced. Now you don't format this time because we've already formatted. So we'll go, click go. Now this is where I was saying Win 10. So this way you know it's Windows 10. And in this one here, Windows 10. And we could call this Windows 10 Gen 2020. I've I downloaded uh, just the other day, but I think this one's more, uh, what version is it? I think this is version Windows 10. It doesn't really tell us what version it is. There it is, November 2019. So let's call this Win 10, November 19. So this way you know what build it is. It's always good to know what build you have because uh, this is going to be no good in, in um, November 2020 because more than likely you have a spring and summer and a fall update. So we want to do that, and now it's going ahead. So you'll see this folder here on the Win Setup. Let's go back out. There's the Win Setup. You would, you will then, in a couple of minutes, you will see the folder being created. Just refresh. And there you go. So Win Setup is created. There's the Win 10 folder and there's the sources. It tells you what it's doing right here. So right now it's building those folders of all the files, the boot WIM and everything there. So let's back out just in case it has to write. We don't want to interfere with it. So during this build, it's going to put the 4.3 gigabyte file. And right now 27 gigs have been copied. So this takes a few minutes to complete. So while we're doing that, let's look at that tool, AOMI Backup Standard. So when you download this tool, this tool is used for backing up your system. So while we're waiting for the other thing to happen, let's move over here while we watch it. So it's got 3.99 gigs to finish. So we do a new backup or restore. So if we're doing a backup, we could back up a system, but there's also another tool here. So what if you have a hard drive in your system and you want to replace an SSD? So what you could do is you could hook up your SSD through a, an external case. Something like this and then put an SSD inside and then the SSD drive now is in here and there's a cable you plug in the USB and now you can sit and clone you can clone your disk clone so you can clone your hard drive to the SSD and now you have that and this this tool would let you do that because that's the whole idea of having this key is to have all these tools so what we can do is then clone our, our hard drive to the SSD if, if you need to do that um, for a backup purpose or for cloning because you do want to switch. So that tool is pretty cool to use for that. Now, what you could do is to have this on the road with you is I'll minimize this. So on this drive, let's call, let's make a folder called software. So while this is doing this, we want to try not to do too many writes, but let's try and do that. So there's software. Let's open it up. Let's go back to our downloads folder and let's grab that file. Copy. 
and let's go back to the wind setup let's go to the software and let's put it here so now when you're on the road you have this clone tool so this is why it's good too if you're able to get into the system now you have some tools some software with this key so the bigger the key you have the more tools you can hold my other tool has uh, installs for adobe uh, reader adobe writer it has photoshop tools because some of my clients have it and they have license keys for it but i need to download the the binaries the the software to be able to install on their computer normally you just log on as them you go onto the adobe portal and then you can download stuff right through the portal and get the latest version that's a recommended way but this is a way just to get them up and running for now and then they can click on update and grab it as well so now we have a copy of software now what I'd recommend in this folder is also go get WinZip uh, or 7-Zip. Uh, any tools like that, you need a virus scanner if you need one. You can do all that as well. So while we're doing this, Windows 10 is being built. There's an IM disk. You can see here in the Windows 10 folder, it's still loading. It takes a few minutes to get this done, right? It's copying the ISO there. So while it's doing this, look back in the iso folder see how the hbcd is there well that's where it put the iso for that so this is still running 1.41 gig is there just under half or probably just over a quarter or a third yeah a third so let's go back here take a look at some more ideas so if you want to try versions of windows you can there's windows 10 now, I think Windows 8 is probably on life support as well, because Windows 10, Windows 7 just went away. So Windows 10 is probably the most current version of Windows you have. I don't think they're going to create 11, 12. I think they're sticking with Windows 10 and call it the updates. Kind of like Mac did, with the kept OS X for a long time. So this is where you can get this. So that's a good way of doing that. We talked about this tool. So I'll close that. Well, I'll leave it open so I can copy the links. And this is a different type of rescue CD. So if you're just looking to make a rescue key, just keep installing all of these. Just download every one of them and make a boot, a master boot. They'll have all these tools. There's password recovery tools. There's all kinds of tools. So if you lock yourself out of your system, somebody thinks it's funny, they change the admin password, change your password, you can't get back in your system. You could use some tools like this to try and reboot into a back door to get into your system. Now, I haven't tried any Windows 10 recently, but some do and some don't. But there is always an option to try it. And then the higher end boot CD is, like I said, the most common one. This has a bunch of data recovery tools, Recover. That's a pretty good tool to get data back. There's all kinds of tools in here you could use. Defragging your drive, tuning, lifeguard diagnostics, show key, key finders, right? Um, what's good about this is if you suspect there's something on your computer and you want to boot up into a different mode, you can boot up in the safe mode or you can boot up in this mode to actually pull things and see what's going on in your system. So that's what these tools are good for. So I want to show you at least the Windows 10 and so Windows 2016 will be the exact same, Windows 2019 will be the exact same, Windows 7 will be the exact same, just using different ISOs. So this key itself becomes your toolbox. So what we'll do is I will put in the other key. Now, because I have VMs working, it's going to ask if I want to connect them to VM. I don't. So let's go here, ISOs and TB. So from here, I'm going to run Another copy of this. Let's hope it lets me do it. Okay. Cancel that. That's the installer. I need to go in here. So let's run. So this is running the one we have, and it says, "Oh, you can't run another version." <laughs> All right. So we can't we can't mess with the system. So as I said, I have a lot of tools that let me get certain things. Um, just I've had a lot of small 
cases where I've had to get into systems because people locked them out. I used to work at public network setting, setting uh, where people would just go in and use computers in like a, like a cafe and they would shut down the systems and lock them out. And so I had to always go in and unlock them until I put a policy on to stop them from doing that. But these systems were like that when I got there. So these are just good methods to be able to recover your system. So if you are looking to save your system and back it up, these are good tools to get back in. Um, like I said, if you have a Dell and HP or a Lenovo, they generally come with a restore CD. You should look on your computer through, as you can see my screen, you can look through your program installed to see if there's anything there. This is like a restore CD or recovery CD or recovery image. And it would let you install, uh, run a tool that would then make a CD key or a USB key with the bootable image. This tool I'm showing you is a multi-bootable. So if you need it to do multiple different things, you could use this key for multiple things now. So we're coming to an end here. Finishing. And this is the first time I've included myself in a video. Um, hopefully it's, it's handy to have me so you can see me uh, showing you how to do this. I'm going to try and do this from now on. Uh, this is my first time doing this, so we'll see how this works. So it's finishing up. It's doing its little final copies. As you can see, this is, oh, that's the other one. On the L drive, this is what it looks like. Windows 10 is there. Looks like it put some files there. And it's done. So. So now what it looks like it's doing is going to boot from that ISO. So let's give this a try. So it's picking up the drive. Let's see if it's there. Pick up L. No, we want L. And now let's test booting this L drive. And let's see if it boots up with the HP, the Hiren's boot CD and the Windows 10. So it's launching. There's a little computer boot up, our virtual computer. And there's our menu. So as you can see, there's this. And then let's go into Windows NT6. We should then see the Windows 10 boot. Okay. So there's Windows PE, back to Grub. Let's see what this is doing. Let's go to the second part. Now, one thing I've noticed, so it's trying to boot. One thing I've noticed with these boot keys is sometimes, sometimes it has uh, messed up my image if, I, if my image was not correct or it was corrupt. So let's give you a test here. refresh it's getting drives now i'm running a lot of stuff on my system so it's running a little strange at the moment so let's boot up my multi-key and i'll show you what this looks like so here you go so it's the virtual computer is booting up it goes in the key and as you can see i have many so let's go to nt6 this should come up with a menu of all of my Windows versions I install. So now I have them all. So that Windows 10 one, let's go here, the Microsoft original. It's now booting up the Windows 10 image. And now I have a bootable key for Windows 10 to install or to do the system checks, things like that. So while this boots up, it would then boot into a mode to allow me to do do the system chores I need or to install. Now, this will probably crash because it's a virtual computer. It's just testing the boot capabilities of the tool. It's not going to be able to run because it's not going to find hard drives or anything. So at this time here, I'll just kill this just to show you that that's what it does. And now that it's done this, it closes it down and it's finished. So let's go back. Let's see what Windows 10 looks like. Now you notice Windows 10 here. Let's go to the TTB. Now Windows Setup and Windows 10. So it put my ISO in different files because that's what it does. And it has a booter, right? 
So that's just what this did. So in this case here, Windows 10 Microsoft, see how it did that? So that's exactly what it did on our other one. And because like I said, the booter won't work on this. So when I labeled it, I may not have labeled it right. So let's do a test on L. So this is where it's important to make sure you boot it, you label it correctly. So on L, it says Windows 10, but there's another menu that didn't come up. I think it's because I was talking and just skipped writing it. So in this menu, oop, I'll go back here. So in this menu that pulls up, that's the one you're supposed to type in Windows, Windows 10, whatever year. I think it did, but I, I may have hit the wrong key. So let's see what that does. So that is actually booting up. The Windows 10 C. So that was correct. That key was right. Because that's why you need to make sure you label it correctly. Because if you don't label it correctly, it looks like the wrong thing. So this will then boot up Windows 10 to the install setup mode, as you see. So that's it. That's all you do to build an emergency boot key. Again, if you want to, now if we want to put Windows 2016 or 2019, I can then go here and grab my 2019. And then you say advanced. It's good. That way that pops up. Click on custom and then click go. And at that point, this is what we said here. So win 2019, you click OK. And this is the menu here, Windows Server 2019. You click OK. And that's when it's going to create a Windows 2019. And when it boots up, it won't say Win PE, it'll say Windows 2019. And then when I click OK, as it's doing, it carries on. So rather than dragging you through the whole process all over again, I just wanted to show you that. And again, I will put down the links below all of these links I talked about. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this with uh, my face in the bottom corner or top corner, whichever, please let me know what you like. I'll, I'll try and do more of it. And I'm trying to get more videos of these out here because there's not enough of them out there giving the information you need. And in my case, I like to show unedited versions because if it breaks while you're doing it, you want to know how to get through it. So my videos are, my intended videos are not to show how professional of a video editor I am, but to show you the technical skills to keep things going, to make it work the way you need it to. Because a lot of people have, they go through videos and have issues. The first thing to do is put in the, the comments below is it didn't work for me. So this is how I'm using it. Just to give you an idea of what I'm using, I'm using, <clears throat> now it shouldn't matter because it's Windows. I'm using Ryzen 7200, Ryzen 7 with 32 gigs of RAM. Um, my VMs, show you again, I'm running Ryzen and I'm also running Ryzen. Now, I'll show you here, we are also using menu here let's go here so i also have mac vms running in test mode uh yes doesn't conform to licensing standards i'm not trying to run a licensed version of it i'm just trying to uh, learn a mac on my pc because i do actually have a mac around here somewhere i have a mac uh a macbook air and i use that for just Toying around. My main system is a Windows desktop. I prefer it because I work in a Windows environment mostly. Uh, the Mac is kind of fun to play with. There's no such thing as the best. It's what's best for you. If a Mac works for you, use a Mac. If you like Windows 10, Windows Server, Windows 7, Windows XP, use what's comfortable for you. Um, so this here will show in a second. Uh, Mac OS booting up. And I just wanted to show that because it's additional content here just to show you what you can do with your machine once you know how to use it. So there you go. So I have a full Mac here working. Um, let's see if I can get this going. It's been a while since I've used this test. Yeah, there you go. So I'm running Sierra <laughs> on a AMD. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. <laughs> yeah.
it's possible. That's this is probably another video, but I just thought I'd show you that I use my system for a lot of diagnostics, including making boot CDs, boot keys, and boot USB keys. So thank you for watching. Thumbs up, like, subscribe if you wish. Uh, I will put these links in the bottom of the video once I edit it. And uh, thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you.